In this part of the class, we're going to discuss the phenomenon of waves and wave propagation and objects or technology that use the idea of waves. There are lots of different kinds of waves, and we'll try to first talk about what a wave, an example of a wave is. First, we should say what a, what a wave really is. A wave is a propagation of energy from one location to another. We can imagine a single oscillator going back and forth through periodic motion because of a restoring force. That could be, for example, a mass on a spring that oscillates back and forth. The spring constantly restores the mass toward the equilibrium point, but of course it overshoots and goes right through the equilibrium off to the other side, and it keeps bobbing back and forth. Whenever we want to describe the motion, we would say, well, there's a restoring force, but it tries to get back to this equilibrium point, this dotted line right here. And then we can develop a coordinate, which we can call x. And the coordinate maps for us how far away this bob is away from that restored point. Well, a wave is a, essentially a connection of a whole bunch of oscillators together in the form of a medium. And it's the way of describing how energy translates back and down the line of oscillators. So we can imagine a set of oscillators, and you can see the disturbance passes all the way over to the one on the far right if we start kicking the one on the far left. Why? Because all these oscillators are connected in the form of springs on down the line, or which we call more generally a medium. There are some exceptions to when waves don't have it, require a medium, but for now we're going to be thinking about waves as propagation of an en energy through a medium. Notice that the particles don't actually propagate on down the line. This mass right here on the far left stays right here on the far left. Its kinetic energy, though, is that's what's transferred on down the far line, down the line. There are lots of examples of energy transmitted through a medium. When we want to describe the wave, we're describing the, the, the position of this oscillator, how far it's disturbed away from its location. We'll call that y. And we want to describe that as a function of time because clearly what's happening is it starts out, the energy starts out over here or the disturbance starts out over here and ends up on the left. And it descri it's described as a function of coordinate because if this is x equals zero on the far left and this is x is some length l on the far right, it depends not only where you are, but when you are at seeing, observing the energy, but where. So this will be a disturbance y as a function of location, x, and time. That's our ultimate goal, is to be able to write down a wave function uh, which describes the, the location of the disturbance. One example of a wave, of course, is the, the transmission of energy through water. Probably you've seen this video right here uh, showing a nice droplet of water being dropped off of a needle, and then the water uh, below it being impacted as this droplet falls in, and you can see the energy disturb of the gravitational potential energy of the original drop falling out and, and, dis and distributed out throughout the water. There's also the example of waves on a string. You all know that various instruments like a guitar or a violin or a cello are making their sound because of the, the standing wave that's created on the strings of the, of the instrument. And here in this picture, although one, two, three, four or five strings are absolutely still, you can see one is blurred. That's because it's in motion at this point. Viewed in slow motion, the guitar looks like this. When one's hand strikes the strings, all, all the strings that are struck start to go into oscillation. We can view the string as an individual object, but if we view each lump of string as an oscillator, then that disturbance is traveling up and down the string and ringing off the ends and coming right back to the beginning. It's a wave traveling up and down the string. Earthquakes are also an example of a wave because it's a disturbance or a transmission of energy through the rock of the Earth. And that original disturbance may have taken place far deep, deep below the surface of the Earth, but now it ripples out up to the surface where we, where we feel its impacts. There's even the, the idea of a stadium wave. That's a transmission of energy or disturbance passed through a medium of a whole bunch of people. You are looking at a new world record for the wave. A 
attempt. Can they do it? 168,000. They are here from the Guinness Book of World Records to certify the record if they can make it all the way around. Yes, folks, just another sellout crowd here at the world's fastest half mile in Bristol, Tennessee. Looks like it's getting on turn two pretty good. So in this case, you can see where the, the disturbance, which is the people standing up and down, is being transmitted back and forth. Of course, they're not directly connected. They're looking at one another. That's the connection. There's also the idea of sound waves, the disturbance of or passage of energy through air particles in columns of air or air in the, throughout a room. It can start with something like a tuning fork, which is vibrating back and forth and sending vibrations in the air itself up and down the length column of, of, uh, of an instrument. And we've all seen how different uh, instruments have different lengths of pipe associated with them if they're trying to play different notes, or they can change the length of pipe if you're like a trombone. Particles are also waves, and then we'll learn it later on in this course about how at the very smallest scale, when we view a particle, it has wave-like properties. It has a wavelength and a frequency and actually, when we try to describe where the particle is, it won't allow us to pinpoint one location, but rather we have to describe an amplitude of where the particle can be overall at any instant in time. This uh, graphic here represents the wave amplitude for the location of an electron in a solid where the atoms in the solid have been specially arranged on the surface in the form of a corral. And so the electrons have a wave amplitude which follow the, the location of the atoms. And they're very fundamental level like this, you can't distinguish between a particle and a wave. In this part of the course, we'll be looking at all these different kinds of waves and what properties they share in common and what properties are unique to different types of waves as we, as we try to look at how, how those facts can be used to make, make new technology.